Hello and welcome back to the New Dig Norfolk Gardener and our garden here in Norfolk on October Norfolk. Yes, we've made it all the way through to October and everything else is looking fine. Now with it being October the weather will be cooling down although I think Mrs W we are expecting one more blast of summer heat this weekend. Oh nice. Sun always shines for your birthday. <laughs> for some this month, the first frost will come. Not for us, we won't see really anything until November. But it's not unheard of. And also, we're moving into a time of preparation. Prepping the ground for next season's vegetables. But there are still things to plant and there are still things to sow. So in this video we shall be giving you our nine top tips for the month of October. Now for our first tip for October, it's the plantings and the sowings. It's a really good month to be planting your garlic, your shallots, and if you grow your overwintering onions from sets, now is the time to plant out those sets. Now in the last video we said that we were going to be planting these out, but we actually never got around to it. I think that'll be a job for this week, this coming weekend, won't it? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Also toward the end of the month, and it does need to be toward the end of the month, broad beans. They can be sown either outdoors or indoors. And we've saved our own seed this year, so hopefully germination will be very good. Fingers crossed. And as for seed sowing, it's time to make your final sowings of lettuce. Lettuce such as Arctic King and Winter Density. That will give you harvest towards the back end of this year and next year. Here in the greenhouse, we've had some wonderful harvest of late over the last couple of months or so, haven't we? Yeah, it's it's been fantastic. Lovely produce. Everything has really caught up and we did get those harvests that we were wondering if they would ever come. <laughs> but for our second tip, you can see that our peppers are starting to ripen. And so are the chilies. The chilies have been ripening gradually for a few weeks now, haven't they? Well, so, so have the peppers, but the peppers seemed, we seem to have a lot that are now ripening all at the same time. The greenhouse will finish this month and things will no longer be able to ripen. But the peppers and the chilies that start green and then turn colour, well they can taste just as sweet or as hot in their green state. So this month have your pepper plants and your chilli plants out, but don't waste these harvests. They're still good food to eat. Now when it comes to the tomatoes, you can see we don't have many left now. But these small ones that you see here, they're not going to amount to much now. There simply isn't enough warmth or daylight in the day now for these to come to anything. So have those off 
and add those to your compost heap. However, if you have some nice sized tomatoes, they can be used immediately in your chutneys and your pickles. And also, you can see like with this one here, it's actually starting to turn. And you can have those off the plant and take them down to your house to actually start to ripen. Do check them weekly and eat the ones that are turning red. If you are struggling to turn them red, then you can add an overripe banana and the overripe banana will let out some ethanol gas, which will actually help these to ripen. And in that way, you can still continue to enjoy your tomatoes for the next couple of months or so, depending on how many you have. Once you've taken your final harvests and you've got all the plants out, then empty the rest of your greenhouse and give it a good wash and scrub, both inside and out. For tip three, we come to the bean arch. And we've actually had some really good harvest from this, haven't we, considering how late they've, we they went have. in. Yes, yeah. We've eaten quite a few fresh over the last couple of months and you've got a good stock of them in the freezer, haven't you? Yes, yeah. But these beans will finish this month. It'll become too cold and obviously as the temperatures get down closer towards zero, they won't like it and they'll begin to die off. However, we still have some beans on here. And if you've still got some beans left on yours, then leave them on there and leave them deliberately. Let them dry out for the rest of this month. They'll start to go brown and a bit leathery. And then you can take them into the greenhouse if by the end of the month it's getting rather wet and just let them finish drying out in there. And then you can remove the seeds, put those seeds on a tray and leave them in a nice cool airy place where those seeds can actually finish drying off. And then you can put them into an airtight container and then they can be added to your winter soups and stews over the coming months. And also, you can save a handful so that you've got some seeds to plant next season. Save yourselves a bit of money. Now, during this month, you'll start to get some of your plots become free as you take your final harvests. So, tip number four is to get out here during this month and where the land does become free, if you're a new dig, then put a nice top dressing of your compost on top. And if you've got tall plants like this in your garden, this is purple sprouting broccoli, sprouts is another tall plant, and so is the kale. You can see that you can actually get underneath here and just spread your compost on and spread that about. And in that way, you haven't got to wait until, well, in the case of the claret, it'll be next April when we're harvesting that. And you can get ahead by spreading the compost on those beds. Now, you can spread compost at any time of the year when you new dig, but by doing it October, November, December, then they get the winter winds, rain and frost to help that break down into a nice tilth ready for you to plant out in next season. You know, and a good example here, you know, is this, this is some of our homemade compost. It's still in a bit of a lump. But actually, once the winds and the frost get a hold of that, it's going to break that down quite nicely. And if you're not new dig like us, because I know there are people that watch the channel that, that, that are not new dig, then you'll need to be incorporating your compost into the soil as you turn it over. But do make sure the ground is not frozen and it's not waterlogged. Not good for their back when those kind of weather conditions are about. As you can see, right at the very back of our plot, we have woodland and from now onwards, 
all these trees are going to start dropping their leaves. But don't waste that, that's a great free resource for you and you can make some leaf mould. We really must get around to making a video about that, Mrs W. I keep, yes. It's on the list, but it never seems as though it <laughs> makes it to the playlist, does it? Uh, but it's a great soil conditioner. And as I say, it's really free. We have this woodland at the back. We have lots of trees and or small trees and shrubs in our family garden and trees to the front of our garden. So we actually do get quite a few leaves. We do. For tip number six, it's my favourite one because it's harvest time. <laughs> and if like us, you actually took the trouble to sow the seed and get some second plantings in, then you'll have much to harvest. And the harvest can include anything from squash, to cabbages, to cauliflowers, leeks, parsnip, swede, calabrese, pak choy, spinach, carrots, beetroot, celeriac and turnips. So there is actually an abundance. Actually there's one more because if you've grown an early variety of Brussels sprouts they'll be available to harvest now too. Also not far away but it'll probably be a November harvest for us. Just as a side note, because we get views from all around the world and from different parts of the UK, if your area is predicted to have bad weather during this month, very frosty conditions, maybe some snow falling, then things like the celeriac, the carrots, the beetroot and the turnips, they can all be harvested out of the ground and go into storage. And they'll store really quite well for the next two to three months so that you can enjoy all that lovely food. Now I talk about this quite a lot, but do remove a lot of the yellowing leaves from any brassicas in particular that you have on the ground. They don't necessarily need to be yellow. You can see this one is on the turn and it's already had some holes put in it by some slugs. And that's the main reason for keeping these plants tidy because when they're close to the ground like this, Mr. Slug can come along and he can slither up onto the leaf and he can work his way all the way up and into the centre of the heart, in this case, a cabbage. And you can see here on these purple sprouting broccoli plants where I've taken the bottom leaves off. You can see where they were. They're so close to the ground that it makes it really easy for Mr. Slug to actually get up and into your plants. And of course, if you just leave any of the leaves that have actually fallen off the plant just there, that just encourages more slugs in. They get the smell of the rotting leaves and away they go. And given that this year in particular has been, we've certainly had more slugs than we would normally have to deal with, haven't we? Yeah, the weather okay. conditions have just been so ideal. And I know that uh, it's been pretty much the same all over the UK anyway, because you've been messaging me to tell me that you also have been having the same problems. Now for tip number eight, if you haven't already done so, then with tall plants like this, do make sure you stake them. We know from experience of gardening here for the last few years that the winds come this way. And I think it was a couple of years ago when the sprouts and kale were just in front of the greenhouse wasn't it yeah and we had some particularly high winds during I think it was february and we could literally see the roots out of the ground couldn't yeah. we it just yeah. pushed all the plants over in this direction so try to help that by staking those because you might get the winds come before january they could be this month they could be november they could be december and you don't want the wind rock to stop these plants coming to a harvest because we won't see purple sprouting broccoli on the Rudolph until at least December and the claret needs to sit in there until next April time when we see that harvest. So things like the purple sprouting broccoli, your sprouts and your kale, it's a good idea to be staking those. And then for our last tip, tip number nine, again we speak from experience, but if you have a pigeon problem like us, 
or you start to see pigeons circling around your plot at any time, then do keep them covered at all times during the autumn and winter period. Only lifting them to take the harvest as and when they come. We've learnt from bitter experience. We go to bed one evening, get up the following morning and those pigeons will have almost stripped a whole plant of leaves. And then of course it can't grow. Now if you like what we do then please consider subscribing to our channel. We'd love to have you on our journey through each and every gardening year. If you've got some top tips of your own that you'll be doing on your own plot, then do leave them in the comments section so that the rest of our community can also see other things that they could possibly be doing during the month of October. Now, I just wanted to end by saying a big thanks to you all. Uh, we had lots of comments of things we can do to help with the white fly problem. And those comments, this is the great thing, they'll be there forever and a day for anybody else on our channel that has the same problem. And we can always direct them to the comments to that particular video. And there they will be to help those too. Now, do have a good rest of your gardening week and we shall see you next time.